Hey, you guys, thanks so much. I see um, Dr. Lee, my former professor. I don't think I see anyone else that I recognize as far as former professors. So, but thanks for hopping on. Um, your name will come up in a little while. I feel like you played a major role in getting me through SUNY, approaching me with the IDS idea. Um, he was the one to do that. So, um, first of all, so yes, I am Heather Beebe. I am a local here in Utica, New York. I live very close to campus, not very close. I live on the east side of the city. Um, I was a community college graduate. I went right to NBCC and then I left academia for a while, had kids, got married, um, and then came back to SUNY Poly. Well, actually I came back to UC for a semester and eventually transferred up to SUNY Poly um, for a few reasons. And, I, and I'll talk about that because it mattered um, in the grand scheme of things um, go, going into the SUNY system. So yeah, and feel free to post questions. That will best help me give you information that you're actually looking for. Um, but otherwise, I plan to just share my story from a genuine standpoint. I am just another mom who appreciated my college experience at SUNY. Um, but I've also taken it to the next level by getting into law school as a Juris Doctorate candidate for 2025. So uh, that just started in January. Um, so taking it back. So I want to address a couple of questions that someone may have that are here listening, or you're a parent, or you're a kid, or, or you've had a troubled teen sometimes, right? Um, I was a C student in high school. There is no denying that. I did not really care. Um, I was more uh, navigating life um, independently. I had a very busy mom that worked a lot. So college wasn't really a question at the dinner table. Um, where are you going? What are you doing? You know, I was kind of on my own with that. So that being said, I think that's how I got my start at NV because I was a little bit like, eh, what do I do? Right. What's really out there? What do I need? Is college for me? And that was, um, and that was hard because after finishing my two-year degree and not having anything else, I felt a bit, you know, I really wanted the experience. So returning back to college, uh, and I really liked history after I lived in Europe for a couple of years. And I think it really threw me under the bus as far as history was concerned. It was really interested in World War II history for some reason. Um, so when I came back and I started a semester at Utica College, I was heavily involved in that being, this is what I want to do. Um, but as I got involved, it, I looked at SUNY, what SUNY offered, and I was like, you know, I don't really have to pick anything in particular. Let me just keep this really general because I still wasn't sure what I wanted. I liked history, but I wasn't sure that's what I really wanted to do. So transferring up to SUNY based on economics, truly for my family, transferring into SUNY was because of the economics of it, right? Um, and the fact that for me, being general studies was easy. Uh, I don't, I can't remember if SUNY called it general studies or liberal arts, but I think they're one and the same, to be fair. Maybe I'm wrong, you correct me if I'm wrong, um, but that's what I did. So up at SUNY, I was well into my um, bachelor's in liberal arts or general studies, whatever they wanted to call it at the time. And I was approached by Dr. Lee that I could, you know, get into this other program and which was interdisciplinary studies, the new IDS program at the time, it was brand new. And he convinced me based on, there was two, two parts of it. And feel free to post any comments, Dr. Lee, if I get this wrong, because this was a little while ago, but there was the option A, which was basically what SUNY said, you had to do this to get the, to get the degree. And then there was the option B that said, you can create what you want, um, get it approved, and that can be what your degree is. So that's where I took the route um, as a non-traditional student as it was, why not complicate it a little bit more and uh, have something that was marketable? And I think that's what's really interesting here is that even though, uh, I mean, fast forward all these years later, I'm in law school, that sounds amazing, right? But prior to that, just having a four-year degree, I having the triple concentration in interdisciplinary studies for three random subjects created the question, what is that all about? Right, so it made interviewing really interesting. There was always good conversation around that. Um, and, and truthfully, 
the history, technology, and globalization was something um, that really actually goes together once I explain it. Um, and I've been able to use that in my career. So um, that put me in, I guess, a lot of the um, humanities classes. So I had my three favorites. I'll, I'll explain um, Dr. Lee, Dr. Hayboyer, and Dr. Boylan. Those three professors um, at SUNY were a big part of my experience. So I kind of want to explain each of them a little bit and why that was the case. Um, as I feel though, it, it was a unique opportunity with each of them that gave me a unique experience that truly made my experience um, life-changing, eye-opening, very educational, not just like going to class, right? I really enjoyed it. So the first one I'll say, so Dr. Boylan, um, she, I took several classes with her, but one of the things I did with her was, well, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go back to the approval of the option B. Okay, so I really liked history. And at the time, I still travel a lot. And I, I was looking to create this business that um, translated and helped business deals going on down in Brazil. So I wanted to create something that I could say, you know, this was my degree. So if I open a business doing this, I have the credentials that fit. So history, technology, and globalization, how could it fit? So the history, understanding the history and relations between countries, technology, we're looking at sustainability. If you're dealing with somebody and you want to work with somebody, you need to understand what they already have. Because if you don't understand what they already have, you don't know where to start to build on that right? So where they're coming from, what they have right now, so you can get really real on what is next, which would be the globalization, globalization piece for growth. Okay, so that's how I related the three topics. History, understanding the stories, technology, understanding what they have, what they're working with right now, and globalization with growth. And those three pieces together, I presented it to a forum and that was approved. So back to what I was trying to say. So Boylan, with her uh, one of the unique things I, I got to do with her was, was there was some funding for a grant on a class, um, and I can't remember what class it was, but not enough people signed up. So they had this money um, that was just waiting to be used, and there wasn't going to be the class. So I offered or asked if I could create an event that would be educational and use this money to make it a cool event, not just an event, um, and offer something educational in regards to my senior project, which was titled, um, <clears throat> it was technology in the Arab Spring. So how technology played um, an effect on the Arab Spring. And I invited professors from Binghamton and Colgate. And uh, so there was two from Binghamton and one from Colgate and me. And, alongside them, which is to me is like a dream job, a professor in the college is like a dream job. So together with them, we sat in a panel in the auditorium or whatever it was called and presented information on technology in the Arab Spring and, and acted as a panel. So with that funding, I was able to provide, you know, <clears throat> Middle Eastern food and have like a cultural event right here in Utica with information about a different area um, talking about sustainability, talking about technology, recognizing their history, and really, I think, celebrating that, right, um, here in New York. So that was a really awesome event, and it was really supported by Dr. Boylan, uh, and very unique, a very unique experience for me um, that I was alone in doing my senior year. So um, Dr. Lee offered a lot of classes um, where we had to do a lot of thinking, like deeper thinking, you know, a lot of material that was a little bit harder. Um, and he wouldn't give away free A's, you know, like you really had to work for that. And any student who's been through college will recognize when you are working really hard at something uh, and you get a C, you're like, you know, and, but some teachers, you know, they're ones that hold you accountable to your curve. And that's the biggest difference. Dr. Lee recognized that each student has a curve. So if he sees that you could have done better at that versus, yeah, yeah that was the best I, I can see out of you, right? And, and there's a difference in that. So he always held me uh, to the bar that he felt I was good at, right? Or, or I, the level I was, I was capable of. That's a good way to say it, right? So I really appreciated that. Uh, from you, Dr. Lee. So, um, and then Hayboyer, one of the things that he did uh, in my experience 
which come, you know, all of this comes out to where I am now in law school. But when we were reading things, uh, the way he forced us to read the assignments and do the homework uh, was a new way of learning for me. We had to read the homework. We had to come up with one statement. Like if you had read a whole book and we're talking books like, you know, a thick book, if you read the whole book and you put it into one sentence, what was the author's intention? What did they want you to understand? And then find three supporting facts that supported that statement, right? So there was this like thesis statement and three supporting facts. Um, and it wasn't a whole book, but we broke down very difficult reading pieces and we had to do that every time. And it was probably the first largest challenge uh, that I really struggled with. I really had to find my Zen to get to read and learn how to read that material. It wasn't just reading, it was how to read that material, get the information he wanted us to get, uh, and then produce the homework about it um, without plagiarizing, <laughs> getting the point, you know, and also living up to this bar that he had set for each student individually, which was another professor that really did that for you. You know, um, if he felt that you didn't get the grade that you thought you felt you got, it's because he saw that you were potentially like you would, you could do better than this. And so therefore you're not getting the best grade. So, um, and in the heat of the moment that you don't like that, but that's, those are, those are great, great qualities um, in a professor. So, um, and with that, that was, you know, my, my experience at SUNY, I graduated in 2012, uh, continued to stay in touch with Dr. Lee, um, helping out on the, you know, behind the scenes with the IDS. I uh, haven't really been doing too much lately with them, but up until COVID, it was something that people were getting together. The alumni from the IDS community was, was sticking together and keeping in touch and getting together and stuff. But, and that was really nice. Um, and then I was invited for the first graduating class of SUNY Poly to speak on behalf of the alumni at the graduation, which was a really amazing event. And it was such an honor to get to do that. Um, I think up until this point, that's the largest crowd I've ever spoken in front of. And that was an honor, um, especially with the bagpipes. So fast forwarding all of this to now, like, okay, so what? So you go to college, like what good is it, right? There's, there's so much controversy right now, like going to college, having student loans, what are you doing, whatever. And there's a couple things I have to say about that. Um, first of all, I mean, if you're, if you're looking to do something in your career that doesn't require a college education, then you really should sit down and think about that for yourself, right? What I wanted to do requires it. So I, and I, and I'm a believer in that, right? Um, but I'm also a believer in keeping an open mind, right? I came into college as a non-traditional student at MV, I was traditional. I was fresh out of high school. I studied abroad first. I had a gap year doing that. Then I came to MV. Uh, I was the same age doing it because that's what society says you should do next, right? Great. When I was 28 years old, when I came back into SUNY, I was non-traditional. I had children. I wasn't really sure what I wanted still. Um, and I also didn't want to waste money having the experience. Um, so I kept it general, right? I kept it open-minded. I wanted to grow my mind. I wanted to have the experience, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, and then as you mature, as you learn how you learn, right? You can start to narrow down, like, I really like this, or I really like this. Um, but I do feel the IDS program was something that I could do all the way up until the end of my, for, you know, my undergrad experience uh, and keep an open mind with something that had a label that was really interesting. Right. And that was a completely um, that was a total customized experience, which I think is a powerful uh, thing to remember when considering, you know, a school when you're undecided. Right. If you can if you can make something to sound cool, it can still be very open ended. You know, a triple concentration in history, technology and globalization. What? Like it, it's very it's it's cool. It just sounds cool. Right. Um, so but how do I use it? Right. How do I use it? First of all, in any scenario, like I worked in banking for a while shortly after my, um, my graduation and, you know, working in the financial world, you're learning people's stories, right? You're learning people's stories. You're learning what they want. You're looking at what they have and where they're looking to grow. So that international perspective of growing business that I had that designed this for me was now being placed on a more home level, right? What is a family's finances? What is someone looking to do in their financial picture? Things like that. So it was very useful um, for that. And then also just my mindset, 
the ability to see the bigger picture, get outside of my own head, kind of put it up on the paper and say, this is the big picture. This is where we are. This is being real with ourselves where we are, and this is where we want to go. And now that is exactly the foundation of my coaching practice, which you can find more about at unstoppableucoach.com. That is what I do. So when people come to me for a situation, they say, this is what's going on. This is what I have. This is the reality of the circumstances. And this is where I want to go. And it is literally parallel to my experience and in my education, which I customized myself in a time of my life when it was unknown. Right. So, um, it's a rock solid program. I'm really excited and honored to be a part of the alumni class um, group, I should say, right? And uh, now getting into law school, it's the same <laughs> when you look at the things that it takes to get into law school, right? Passing the LSAT exam. If you're not familiar with the LSAT exam or the process of getting into law school, and maybe you don't even care, and that is fine, but it's an extremely difficult exam. And it's the only exam out there that doesn't test you on prior knowledge. So it tests you on looking at the material that's in front of you under a clock, right? And you're timed, you need to look at the material, you need to figure out what they're, what they're trying to say, and then you need to answer the questions, right? So it's quick, it's specific, it's detail-oriented, and you have to be able to see what they're asking you, right? And I can't say enough how having these difficult courses in the IDS um, where we were forced to really sit down and get to the point, get to the real guts of the reading, uh, that skill was essential in getting through the LSAT exam. So, um, you know, and now passing the LSAT exam, I'm in law school full in. And again, those same skills of being able to read things, being detail oriented, and then seeing our capabilities and our, uh, our curve, right? Where we're going to be. And that's literally how we are measured in law school. You're measured on a curve. Where are you performing in, re in kind of regards to everybody else? So, um, and it's not, I'm not a traditional student at all. So I say this again, if you are a parent, just wondering if you can do this, um, feel free to ask questions on how I do it. You know, I think um, I get all the time. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. We have kids. I'm going to law school. I have my business, you know, having a support system in place. That's huge to having success in anything that you do in life. We all have the same amount of time every day. We all have the same amount of hours. We all have the same amount of days. There is no one has more time than anyone else. Um, it's the people who align, you know, who accept support, accept that you don't have to do everything by yourself. You're still a good parent if you're not, you know, um, the only one helping take care of your children. You're still a good parent if you accept support in this area. You're still a good student if you accept support in this area. You're still a good whatever, right? So it's really important to take support. 